Told you guys Rise was good. What's up Game Leapers, Coach Cheeks back at it. And in this video, you're going to learn how to machine gun your way to victory on Rise in every ranked game. We're going to watch Knights, arguably the best mid laner in the world, destroy Korean challenges on the Rune Mage, going 12-1-8. There's an insane early solo kill in this game, and as the replay will show, the damage Rise can dish out is absolutely nuts. The gameplay will teach us how to play Rise and mid lane in Season 11, what to build, and how to hard carry a game on the Blue Battle Mage. The tips and invaluable information we're about to dive into are guaranteed to make you a better mid laner, so stick around guys because you will miss out for sure. If you are loving the preseason as much as we are then please drop a like on the video and subscribe and turn on all notifications. We're uploading at least one video a day to help guide you through the unknown of the preseason so make sure you do yourself a favor and sub. I also can't urge you enough to head on over to gameleap.com. If you want to get the most out of Summoner's Rift then don't look past our professionally made guides, courses and videos designed to help you become the best player you can be. The link will be in the description. Alright let's get into it. Now it's one thing to know what to build and what runes to run and we'll get into all that but if we don't know how to play mid lane, we won't be able to abuse those massive power spikes. Tip number one, get control. This means having priority, which is when your minion wave is pushing towards the enemy tower. So how do we go about doing that? By damaging the wave more than our opponent. We see Knight's auto attacking the minions for two reasons. Yes, he wants to get control if he can, and two, he doesn't want the enemy wave crashing into his tower. But why not? It's harder to see us under tower before major items are bored, and it gives Ari a chance to put pressure on Rise and deal damage. Knight's obviously doesn't want this. Ari wants the same thing as Knight's. She wants that early control and is auto attacking the wave too. And this means future minion waves will collide in the middle of the lane, which is absolutely fine for Rise. The position of the wave dictates our general positioning guys and this is crucial to understand. If the minion wave is frozen near Ari's turret, we have to push up and this is obviously riskier for us, especially on Rise. If the minion wave is more central, then our positioning is safer and we die less. You might be asking, but Eggs, you just said to get the wave pushing to get control. I did, yes. And this does mean we have to move further up the lane, but if Ari chooses to fight us, we have the minion advantage and win every time. The difference is when it's not pushing and the waves are stabilized outside Ari's turret. This is when you stack up numbers in the dev department. I'm sure we've all been there. Now it's important to note that if we're using abilities on the wave, those are abilities we could have used on the enemy champion. You only want to be using your abilities on the wave when you're trying to thin enemy minions or when you're trying to hard push. You can see Knights in this game is throwing out his Q, Overload, between the range and melee minions to damage Ari. It's actually so clean, to be honest. Some of you might be scared of fighting for the minion advantage during the first two waves, but that's only because it's a whole new playstyle. If you guys run it down for 10 games trying to play an aggressive early game, that's how you will improve and learn. Otherwise, that gap between Knights playing Rise and someone in Silver playing Rise will never be closed. I don't want you guys sitting back thinking you can't play the game because of a bad matchup or you think Rise is bad. Try to get control. At the very least, the wave will be centralized as it is in this game, and this gives you opportunities to deal damage to the enemy mid laner and CS safely. Tip number two, the plus one. As a mid laner, who would you invite to come and join the party? Your jungler, right? They are your plus one. But guess what? I'm not interested in your plus one. I'm interested in the opponent's plus one, and in this game, it's Graves. As I'm sure you're all aware, mid lane is never just a 1v1 and I'm willing to bet some of you out there, me included I've done it, say jungle diff after you die. The enemy jungler may well be having a better game but the reason it's a jungle diff is because you died and gave that enemy jungler extra gold. So the real question here is why am I dying to ganks and how do I stop dying to ganks? Look at knights in this game. Why do you think he's hugging one side of the lane? Is it because what? He likes the texture of the wall on this side more than the other? What he's doing is standing away from a potential gank. In this game Graves can only really gank Rise with red buff, so Knights holds the high side of mid until Graves transitions to its top side jungle. He then swings back down to the low side of mid. The reason why this is effective is because there is space between Rise and Graves if he wants to gank. It gives Knights time to react and escape to safety without being touched. The only way Graves executes a gank is if Ari was to flash charm or the enemy support comes out of nowhere. From my hundreds of hours of coaching experience, this is one of the core problems mid laners have. Considering the enemy plus one. Every game is the same. You run to mid and stand in the middle of the lane, you die level 3 to a Xin Zhao gank, and you spam ping your jungler. Think about who the enemy laner is bringing to that party. Are you going to let them in or not? Let me know in the comments if that joke was cringe or legit. If you're learning about how to play mid lane from the couple of tips we've detailed so 
far, guys. Please remember to drop a like, we really appreciate it. And any questions about what I've been through, don't hesitate to ask away in the comments. Tip number three, know your bank. Guys, it is essential if you're to become a top mid laner to know your gold values. How much do your major items cost? If I was to ask you what your first back timer should be on your champion, how many of you would know? Now, your first back timer, for those of you who don't know, is based on the gold value of the first item you want to buy. For example, and we'll use the Season 10 Rise build, you would start with a Sapphire Crystal and back on 500 gold for your tier, right? For Season 11, and I'll walk you through the new Rise build in just a moment, you are going to start with that same Sapphire Crystal and a refillable potion and build the mana crystal into a lost chapter. This is 950 gold away, and this is your new first back timer. So remember it, write it down, get it tattooed. It's vital we play towards this value. 950 gold. You can get to the 950 after the sixth wave with CS alone. This is the second cannon wave. It's a little awkward though, and here's why. You hit level six off this wave, and if you are playing against a champion with all in potential when they skill their ultimate, it's risky to stay longer in lane with just a sapphire crystal, right? In this meta as well, Lots of players will be picking Fizz, Alkali, Zed, champions that can grey screen you on repeat, so we have to be mindful of that. Let's think about the back timers for other popular mid laners. You were playing Zed and started Longsword, your first back timer is 750 gold, which is what? Serrated Dirk, nice. What about if you were playing Katarina? If you can get to 1050 gold for Hextech Alternator, you're doing work. When we play any mid laner, that gold represents power, but only when we invest it. So if it's just sitting there, it means nothing. What matters is what we have when we are on the map. So yeah, we can become stronger by leveling up, sure, but we have to recall to become even stronger. So let's start thinking about backing like it's a positive. Most low elo players think it's bad to back because you're wasting time. No, you're wasting time sitting on that item spike for longer and longer and longer. Know your bank, guys. Tip number four, the machine gun build. Now, this is specifically for Rise, and I'm not going to kid you guys who don't want to play him by saying you want to build this on every mid laner. So if this is where we part ways, then thanks for watching. And if you would be so kind as to like the video on your way out, even better. Okay, so we have our lost chapter, which is how much gold when we start Sapphire Crystal. 950, good. Then we're going to buy a tier of the Goddess, which is now 400 gold, and sit on it until we complete our Leandre's Anguish, which is 2100 gold away. We need to buy a Fiendish Codex, that's 900 gold, and spend another 1200 to get to that mark. Then we're building our tier into Archangel Staff, which is another 2600 gold. The Staff comprises tier, of course, a needlessly large rod, and another Sapphire Crystal. We want to buy Boots of Speed at some point during all this as well, 300 gold. I'd recommend upgrading the Boots into Mercury Treads or Plated Steel Caps. These are the new Ninja Tabis. Both of these are another 800 gold. Now, we're not buying tier as a starting item. You did hear me correctly. The reason for this is that Ryze's biggest power spike is when he completes the mythic Leandri's Anguish. The ADAP, the 600 mana that puts power into his abilities by his passive arcane mastery and the 20 ability haste that makes machine gunning a lot more achievable are too good. The mythic passive attached to Leandris is great for Rise too. It grants all other legendary items 5 ability haste so we'll have an extra 20 haste at full build which is really nice. The reason for buying a tier after lost chapter is because we still need time to accumulate 450 stacks. So our first three items are sorted and this is our core. Leandri's Anguish, Archangel Staff or Seraph's Embrace, and Mercury Treads or Ninja Tabis. The next three items are to be bought in order of what is needed most in that particular game, and I think there are six viable options here. One of them is the new legendary Cosmic Drive. The 70 AP is a good increase. The 200 health makes us a little beefier because the only tankiness you will have at this point is from your boots. 30 ability haste is an insane spike and with these three offensive items, Anguish, Seras, and Cosmic, we can start machine gunning champions to the great screen. On top of that, the spell dance passive that grants movement speed when dealing damage synergizes really well with Riot's Overload and Phase Rush. Another item to consider is Frozen Heart. Into AD heavy compositions, this is a must buy. AD armor is absurd, and the two passives, Winter's Embrace and Rock Solid, make it even harder for attack damage champions to come close to killing you. The 400 mana is great because it works with our passive, and makes sure we never run out of the blue stuff, and the 20 ability haste adds even more cooldown to our kit, which is an important stat for the rune mage. Banshee's Veil is the go-to against heavy AP compositions. The 45 magic resist is a welcome stat, but the annul passive is always useful. It grants us a spell shield that blocks the next enemy ability. 
Later in the game, this might be a stun or long range skill shot, and this can be game changing. The 65 AP gives us more power, as does the 10 ability haste. One new legendary that works great with Leandre's Anguish is Demonic Embrace. Passive as a Karna Gaze burns enemies and you gain armor and magic resist if a champion is affected. This builds out of a giant's belt and offers 350 health. Damage and tankiness, ideal for Rise. I will also recommend Rylai's Crystal Scepter. This is the same gold as Demonic Embrace, 3000, and builds out of exactly the same items. 90 ability power, awesome, 350 health, awesome, and the passive Rhyme Frost that slows enemies by 30% for one second. Later in a game when you have unlimited use of your abilities because of all the ability haste, enemy champions will not be able to escape. You will be EQing non-stop. Last item to consider is Void Staff to shred through enemy magic resist. You have the burn from anguish to deal with healthy tanks and Void Staff to deal with damage dealers building mercury treads and items like more of Malmordius, Mercurial Scimitar, Wits End and so on. Quick thought on Rabanon's death cap. It's now 3800 gold and yes it gives you the most AP in the game, but Ryza's effectiveness revolves around mana tankiness and cooldown. Of course AP helps, but the suggested items offer more for Ryza's identity. I hope this video has been useful to all of you wanting to know how to play mid lane in Season 11 and how to send it on Ryze. As always guys, if you enjoyed the video and found it informative, please leave a like to help it get out there. Any questions or general thoughts again, feel free to leave a comment down below and don't close your browser without checking out our website gameleap.com. If you are serious about maximizing your potential on Summoner's Rift, then look no further. One of the premier sites offering you instructive content to help you be the best. This has been Coach Eggs. Until next time, peace.